What's up, everybody, and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Rebellion review. A lot of big things on this show tonight, and of course, the title versus title match, AEW versus Impact World title on the line. All the gold is on the line tonight, and a lot was going on for this show. Hopefully, I don't have the same sound problems I have with my SmackDown review. Really don't know what was going on with that, but um, I think I fixed that whole problem now. But Impact, a very loaded card for tonight's pay-per-view with a lot going on. Uh, D'Lo Brown and Matt Stryker were on commentary. As the first match we did kick off tonight was Ace Austin, TJP, and Josh Alexander in a triple threat match for the exhibition title. Have to excuse if I kind of mess up some words. I'm having some problem with my teeth right now. And I really need to get back to the dentist because this shit has been hurting all day. So I'm going to do this review to the best of my ability, all right? Listen, overall, this was a fun opener. A very hot opener to kick off the show. Um, I enjoyed this match a lot. Both of the, All three of these guys were just going crazy out there. This was a great way to start off when it usually comes to the X Division. Man, just from the stuff was insane. From the fold being caught by um, what, what Ace tried to do the fold. And then, um, I know TJP dodged it, and then Josh ended up hitting like a big, um, you know, kind of like a centon roll on him then. That was crazy, even hitting the ankle lock while TJP's got the, uh, you know, tarantula on him. Just a lot of crazy spots in this match. I enjoyed it. I had fun watching this opener, okay? Of course, Madman Fulton had got involved. TJ, uh, ended up, TJP ended up getting, like, giving him like a big, um, splash from the, you know, the, ropes and everything basically springboarding himself out there because uh Fulton had pulled him out but Josh ended up hitting like his um like a J drill or like a power drive on the ace Austin for the win becoming a new X division champion yeah ace only held it for like what a month since like sacrifice I believe or two if I'm not mistaken but I feel like this was Josh's time so given that there is no more north team so I'm glad he's getting a good singles push right now I'm cool with him winning this title all right I like this match a lot it was a fun opener. I feel like it was time, finally Josh's time because I didn't like the last time when he won that like triple revolver gauntlet thing, and then they did the match to follow an impact with no build. At least there was a little bit more build into this into this match. So I enjoyed this match a lot. And Josh Alexander, like I said, I'm glad he's finally getting a singles push um, and getting the exhibition title. So that's cool to see because um, I was kind of worried when Ethan Page left him. Uh, next, Violent by Design. Uh, Joe Doring, Diener, Rhino, and I guess a mystery partner now since Eric Young did tear his ACL. He, <coughs> he was talking to somebody in the back saying, you know, um, you are the replacement. You're not part of this war, but we're glad we found you. They went against James Storm, Chris Saban, Willie Mack, and Eddie Edwards, the person that was. Um, and I, a lot of people were kind of wondering who it was going to be. It was Morsi or W. Morsi. In other words, Big Cass, um, well, formerly known as Big Cass in the WWE. Some people actually thought it was going to be Davey Richards because I heard he was back in the wrestling now. So a lot of people were expecting that. I wouldn't mind seeing that, though, see the Wolf versus Wolf thing. But let me just say Big Cass, I'm trying to go by Morrissey now. And this was a fun tag match and everything. But he looks in, he looks great. He looks in incredible shape. Uh, he did win with the East River Crossing onto uh, Willie Mack for the win. He kept punching him after his, um, you know, Violin by design looked on because Eric Young is still there. He just kind of sat in a chair at the top of the stage because, like I say, he's got a torn ACL, but I'm glad he's still around and he's going to be on the microphone and whatnot. But, uh, you know, Cass basically, you know, um, sorry, I'm trying not to say Cass. I don't know if he is signed with Impact, no. Um, but he did hold his fist up as Violin by design and he'll take fist up also. So could he be part of the group? I'm not sure. And, and you know, I, I will say this I knew he was back in wrestling. Um, I heard recently, given by a few videos and I saw a little of his interview. I'm glad Cass, you know, has, um, I I'm glad he's beat his demons and whatnot. I'm glad he's looking better out here. He's cleaned up his life and he looks in incredible shape. And cause he did say he was, you know, he had a lot of problem with alcoholism and, um, I think depression, especially once he left WWE. Cause I had said a lot of things about Cass and everything. I'm surprised no one is, hasn't really even tried to sign Enzo and Cass and whatnot during this time, even with them back as a team, but I even said to myself, the man looked horrible, um, Cass, the guy just kept getting into trouble, fucking up shit, and I didn't know where he was gonna be going, because last time he got knocked out by Pat Buck, I believe, before Pat Buck went to the WWE and whatnot, so, like I said, I'm, I'm very glad that, um, well, I guess Morsi, he's cleaned up his life, and, um, 
he looks better. He's back in the wrestling. And um, like I said, the man, he looks in incredible shape and he's back. So uh, we'll see what the future holds for uh, Morrissey or Big Cass or whatever you want to call him. I'm sorry I'm moving this camera around, but keeps having a mind of its own. But um, yeah, so very fun eight-man tag. And I was pleasantly surprised to see him. So that was cool. Good replacement. The guy still looks like a giant. Um, Brian Myers went against Matt Cardona. Was it a bad match? It's not a feud I really wanted to see that much. I don't see the, need to see the Edgeheads or the Major Brothers go against each other. I'm with Brian Myers. Like, I'm trying to leave my past behind. Uh, Cardona there wants to still be Zack Ryder. Now, um, Myers did get in the win after, um, what was it? Cardona did his finisher, not the Rough Rider, but, um, Whatever it's called now, radio silence and the referees and stuff checked on him or whatnot. And um, they tried to help him up, and Myers did also. But once he got him up, he hit him with the roster cut for the win, which gives Cardona out given that his knee buckled and whatnot. But still, I don't really want to see more of this feud, okay? It wasn't a bad match. It's just I've liked how they've been doing Brian Myers lately, and he's reinvented himself, and he stepped away from being um, Kurt Hawkins and everything. So I don't. I'm glad it's been less Kerr Hawkins and him trying to become his own man and whatnot at this point. And, um, you know, he's been doing good. So hopefully they can move on fast enough away from the Cardona feud because I don't even really want to see this feud, okay? Um, next, Tony Khan, uh, Jacksonville Dixie, uh, Jerry Lynn, Tony Schiavone, and Aubrey Edwards showed up. I guess Tony brought his whole crew of AEW with the referee. But Scott said, listen, I have my referee, Brian Hebner. Um, and whatnot, Tony kind of laughed at it and whatnot, but I guess there's going to be two referees in this match then. Um, a lot of people showing up at that main event. Uh, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles went against Jordan Grace and Rachel Elring. Uh, Jazz was out there with them. Um, I was kind of surprised to see them drop the belts. I was surprised the finish just kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, oh, the match is over already? I'm like, okay, um, like, Rachel... I mean, she got the finish on. I don't know what it was, but she had her finish on Kier Hogan and got the win. So her and Jordan Grace are the new tag team champions. Like I said, I don't know much about Rachel Elring. I would have liked if they just waited for them to do a surprise instead of, you know, bring her out on Thursday. I'm like, let us kind of guess to see who it is. And then again, I haven't seen him since, since like, what, NXT? And that was like on um that was like four or five years ago during that May Young Classic stuff. So I don't know a lot. But we will see what happens uh next with uh Kier Hogan and Tasha and whatever they will get their rematch for the tag title. So we'll see what happens after that. Next, Sammy Callahan versus Trey McGill in a last man standing match. I will say this both of these men tried to beat the living shit out of each other, and I enjoyed this match. Okay, just Crazy stuff, especially Miguel damn near diving out of the ring, almost hitting his head basically onto the um what was it, onto the um freaking guardrail doing a suicide dive. That was pretty deadly. I know he used a chair at one point trying to get a weapon. Callahan even like using like a wrench or something, like pliers sticking it into uh Trey Miguel's mouth and whatnot. Even there was a table at one point which um Sammy ended up Slamming Miguel like to the into like the legs of it, like you know, just kind of like on his back, which you know, like didn't like impale him or anything, but just like on the back of the chair, like back of the table, wasn't at the legs of it, so that did look pretty deadly. Callahan even up doing a chair at his head, then knocking uh Trey into the ropes. Um, they had got a table, and this was one of the botchmania spots of the night where basically Callahan did a power driver, but. The table ended up tipping over, and, you know, the table just didn't break. Maybe the legs broke, but the table did not break. So, um, boom, there you go. Callahan ended up basically um, setting up some ring steps in on the side, and there was a table right there, which he went for a power driver. Trey tried to block it and um, do something else, but Callahan ended up hitting him in the nuts then and still hit the power driver on the edge of the steel steps that looked pretty deadly as um, Miguel, I guess, went under the apron then, and I guess Callahan thought he won, but then he had like a big running cutter through the um, through the table then, which the referee counted to 10, but Trey was able to get up before Callahan, so uh, Trey ended up winning this last man standing match. Like I said, both men beat the hell out of each other. This was a great brawl. I actually liked it. Um, someone could say the whole no-selling thing and whatnot, maybe that table spot, but 
they beat the hell out of each other. And it gets to the point of the story was that if Trey had the heart, if he had the soul, if he had the passion and whatnot. So I think this proved that he had the passion to beat Sammy Callahan in this match. I feel like something is going to be more to this story, so we'll see what happens with it. But I did enjoy this match, though. Um, next, Ritzwan was in the back talking about his match uh, against Omega tonight. It's the biggest match of his career that he's won these titles. But once that bell rings, he's going to a bell against um, Omega tonight and walk out as AEW world champion and Impact world champion. Juice Robinson, Dave Finley, uh, Finn Juice went against the Good Brothers for the tag team titles, um, which a good match, but I was very surprised that Finn Juice even retained. Okay, I was. I actually thought Gals and Anderson were about to win it once they hit the Magic Killer, but um, Finley got in and basically took out Anderson, and Juice got the tights on um, Gallows for the win. So I'm very, very surprised that, um, you know, that they still have the titles, though. Some would say Impact doesn't have a really strong tag division right now. Um, so maybe they need to build some more before they can get the belts back. I don't know how long they will be back in New Japan again or if they'll be competing on these next set of tapings. But um, I'm assuming they will be back in New Japan with the belts again. But I'm very surprised that they retain. That's something I did not expect. Not a bad match, but I just didn't really expect it. Um, they're about to interview Kenny Omega, but Don Callis came out saying, you know, course changes history we are living in history and now omega you know he's been wanting to do it since he was 10 years old and he's going to walk out with both of those belts tonight deanna peraza when he gets to neil dashwood for the knockouts title listen i've said this before i don't even know why this match was made to begin with it's a heel versus heel match i don't really know how Tennille got a title shot i honestly don't um unless it was from hardcore justice i think there was a title shot thing going on because i was confused like why she had it and it's not much to say about this story the match was not bad or anything and deanna ended up getting the win of course she had distractions and whatnot but she got the queen's gambit uh like a power driver for the win and then her and her crew ended up trying to jump to neil but next thing you know the return of taylor taylor wild i haven't seen taylor wild in a very long time i've already been doing some promo videos for her and whatnot Man, the last time I really saw Taylor Wilde really even wrestle was like maybe 2010 or 11 when she was still in TNA. Or I don't know where she really wrestled after that or really what she's been doing. I know she showed up that rebellion like a couple years ago, but, you know, she just kind of showed up with the roster because she lives in Canada and everything. But, you know, Taylor Wilde could still move out there, and I guess she's going to be going for Deanna next. So it was cool to see her again uh, back in wrestling. So we'll see what happens with Taylor Wilde. But I have not seen Taylor Wilde since, like, to die. I think that was when she was still tagging with Sarita at the time, and they were a tag team with the Knockouts tag titles and whatnot, but um, it is still nice to see her again. But in the main event, though, big fight feel. Mauro Nalo on commentary, since, you know, they've been talking about that, which was great. A uh, lot of crews out there from the AEW side and Impact side. Uh, of course, Omega coming out with the Good Brothers and, uh, you know, Don Callis. Rich Swan having Eddie Edwards and Willie Mack out there with him. Tony Khan and them sitting by ringside. Scott Demore uh, standing, um, you know, kind of somewhere by ringside also. Both referees in the ring. Dave Penzer, David Penzer ended up giving the introductions. As, uh, you know, Don Cows took the mic and, of course, did his introduction for Omega. But, you know, Penzer introduced Rich Swan. So, very big fight feel. A lot of guys out there. And I'm thinking to myself, it's going to be some crazy, screwy-ass finish, Okay. Listen, number one, this was a great match. Fantastic match, some would say. Uh, a couple bad botches on the near falls. Not near falls, but on the top rope part, especially when they were trying to go over that sunset flip or two of them, I believe. And it just looked really bad. But I, like I said, this was a great match. Of course, there was a ref bump, which I thought this was everything going to get screwy because, you know, um, Swan was going for his lethal injection, but Omega put the referee in the way. Which, you know, he hit Brian Hebner, but um, Omega ended up clothesline Swan and getting a steel chair was going to hit him with it. But Aubrey Edwards stopped, you know, stopped him then, took the chair away from him. Um, Swan ended up hitting like the uh, lethal injection then and whatnot, which Hebner got to try to go for the pin, but it didn't work. Omega went for a V trigger, Swan dodged it, got him with some quick kicks as, um, what is it, uh, Mauro Ronaldo said, the Swan, and, Swan Mich Michinoku or Swanichuku, I don't know how he said it, but it's not Richinoku, Richinoku Driver, that's what he called it. 
that I thought that sounded pretty cool for a near fall. But, you know, Swan tried to go for the Phoenix Splash, but Omega got out of the way then. Swan and landed on his feet. Omega got him with a V-Trigger. He hit him with a German Suplex then. Hit him with the J-Driller still uh, for a two-count and whatnot. Um, Omega just went for another V-Trigger then and was going to go for a second one, but Swan fell to the mat. Omega picked him up, but, you know... Um, and everything is um, Eddie and, and uh, Willie tried to, you know, rally Swan on and everything. But, you know, he went for another V trigger. Just it, hit him with several V triggers. Let me say that. He was just like, hit him out there. Swan tried to do what he could to, you know, fight back and everything and whatnot. And um, Swan got him with like a suplex stand. He tried to go for the Phoenix Splash one more time, but Omega got out the way and he hit one more V trigger in the One Wing Angel. And he won the Impact World title or the Unified, the Impact World title and TNA World title for the win. And, you know, him, Gals and Anderson, and um, Don Cal celebrated. So let me say this. Number one, this was a great match. Now, as you're, if you're an Impact fan, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very disappointed. And, you know, we all knew the outcome was going to be like this, okay? We knew this was going to happen. There was no other way around it. It's like I said before. They never really gave you that small of a glimmer of hope that Rich Swan was ever going to beat Omega. And don't get me wrong. Throughout this match, I was kind of hoping Swan was going to win a couple times. I was, but I knew he wasn't going to win, okay? But at the same time, this whole feud is looked one-sided as fuck. Yes, it's not AEW's job to promote Impact's pay-per-view and whatnot and everything. But by God, like I said before, many, many times in the past, would have killed them to put freaking Rich Swan on Dynamite one time. I even expected Moose to come out and do something. I actually thought he would have screwed Swan out of the title. But no, Swan lost clean. So... I'm assuming Moose is going to beat his ass next because he said he was going to do it. So get ready for Thursday when he gets ready to whip his ass then. So what, but you know, like I said, this was just one-sided as hell. As everyone would say, this partnership, okay? It's look one-sided. We knew this was going to happen. It's just, by God, like, it's just Swan has been punked out the whole time. It's like, why should anybody believe this guy was ever going to win? Why should we really believe he was? We knew it would be a great match. I'm not taking anything away from that. Great match in the ring. Not taking anything away. But, like I said, this was a one-sided feud. So what's going to happen next now, though, huh? We know Omega's on this whole belt-collecting thing right now. He's done it with that AAA Mega title. He's done it now with the Impact World title. And I'm sure he'll be showing up on Dynamite this Wednesday uh, with it also. Could Swan show back up? Hell, could Moose at least be the next challenger and be the man to take away, uh, take it from Omega and whatnot? Could he? I don't know. All right, because some are wondering right now, is Omega going to go to New Japan next and take the belt off of Will Ospreay, which I highly doubt that in every, in many, many ways. So I'm going to say, is he going to go to the NWA and take the belt from Magnus? Is he going to go to MLW and take the belt off of Jacob Fatu? Is he going to go to Ring of Honor and take it off of Rush? Or That's what everybody's saying, but let's be honest, AEW doesn't have that many partnerships with all these people, okay? So, what is going to happen next in all of this? What is going to happen next? Like I said, if you're an Impact fan, you got to be really pissed and disappointed. But you knew the outcome of all of this, okay? You did. So, I would have liked this Swan one. It would have been a big surprise. But they never gave it away, that. But yeah, what is next to expect out of all of this, huh? Like some would say, Impact fans probably, you know, probably pissed off. AEW fans are probably going to rejoice right now. So, we'll see what happens. If I have to be a betting man, I think Omega will hold these belts until anniversary. And I say that maybe, I know the Impact said they got a lot of shows coming up from Under Siege and Against All Odds in the past few months. But, of course, with Slammiversary being their next big pay-per-view, just like last year, they got to start promoting people that got released. And we saw a little couple teaser shots from Samoa Joe to Mickey James to, um, well, actually some different ones, too. We saw the Great Muda. We saw Naito. We saw Okada. It was like a Mexican flag, a British flag. So, um, 
Interesting that they have Naito and Okada and all that. What is Naito possibly showing up to some adversity? I'd be really surprised if Naito showed up. Um, Lij, you know how we roll up over here, but um, I'd like to see that. But of course, you gotta have Joe and Mickey James and oh yes, Chelsea Green was in that too, or Laurel Van Ness as she used to be in Impact. So uh, or anybody, we don't know who will show up. But when that ninety days is done. And, you know, it's July, that pay-per-view. That's when a lot of these guys' contracts, you know, well, you know, 90-day 90, 90 day thing will be, um, you know, up and everything. That's when they can start wrestling again. So we'll sh see who shows up at Slammiversary. But overall, great pay-per-view. Of course, the main event, um, some would say, stole the show. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed Trey and um, Sammy was really good. I love the opener for the X Division title. Uh, that match was great. Um... William Morsey, uh, W. Morsey, or Big Cass uh, making a surprise appearance or his debut right here was a really cool thing to see. Like I said earlier, I'm glad Cass got his life together. Um, you know, uh, Taylor Wilde making a return, too. So it was a lot of things to say about Rebellion tonight, okay? But the biggest thing, of course, was the main event with the title versus title and Omega winning the belts okay so tell me what do you think about rebellion do you like this decision do you not i'm sure we all saw this decision coming i'm not the biggest fan of it but we just knew it was coming okay we all saw this coming so i don't know what to expect next next out of all of this will swan even show up on dynamite or somebody will challenge omega for those titles i don't know okay but i guess we'll just have to find out this thursday but I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about Rebellion tonight. Um, you know, check out any other review that's up, uploaded, uploaded online right now. I'll see you tomorrow night for Raw. So, yeah. I'm out of here. See you guys later. Hope you enjoyed Rebellion. Peace out.